the hospitals are definitely uh, more full. We are, you know, the hospitals are doing a pretty good job at managing the patients that we have. We are filling, uh, but it's not compromising our care by any means in any of the hospitals. But we are in a situation where things could get severe. I mean, the, the convention center has opened, which is a red flag. That's a sign that things are bad. You know, we never want to take patients out of a hospital and put them in an alternate care site. And that's the situation we're in. We only have about 10 ICU beds citywide right now. So, and that may have changed in the last couple of hours. So things are moving and they're getting, they're getting very serious in Austin. The vaccine is rolling out, but that's not going to change what's going to come in the next couple of weeks. What we're seeing now is the outcome of Christmas and New Year's, and it's going to take weeks before we start to see any improvement from that. The convention center is opening because of space issues. Our hospitalizations are too high for us to manage across all of our hospital systems. We cannot keep up with the rate of COVID in our city. That's why we open up the alternate care site. It's really to decompress the hospitals. Patients are not gonna be admitted directly to the convention center. That's for patients that are already on the down, the, uh, on the uphill, uh, they're doing better. They've already recovered somewhat from COVID, not quite ready to get discharged, but we can move them quicker to an alternate care site for them to recover before going home and open up those beds for the really critically sick that we don't know if they're going to decompensate soon. So it's really a space issue. The reason that we're doing it, and Austin has done a phenomenal job with this since day one, is staying ahead of the curve. Um, you know, we had this convention center open in the summer and we were ready to, you know, pull the trigger and open the convention center. We didn't need to, but we're so grateful that we had all the plans in place because now we need it and we're ready and we're initiating things before things are getting to a point you know, like they are in LA and other cities where they just cannot keep up. Uh, there's a combination of hope because the vaccines are here and we're all beyond grateful that we finally have these rolling out. Uh, so there is hope, there is a light at the end of the tunnel, um, but there's a, lot, there's a lot of fear because there, you know, even there's some hospital staff, there's a lot of vaccine hesitancy that we're still fighting against. A lot of misinformation, the anti-vax movement, you know, it, it's been a really tough battle for us uh, from a physician standpoint, from the healthcare worker standpoint, to really protect the public the way that we want to, um, it, it takes a big behavior change, and it's it's been a difficult battle. You know, there there's some feelings of just like when is this going to change? Um, you know, this is worse than we were this summer, and we didn't think we would hit another surge like we did in the summer, um, and we did, and now it's worse. And we don't know when it's gonna turn around. We're looking at the modeling and things aren't looking great for the weeks to come. So, you know, there's a lot of stress. It, it's sad, you know, there's so much suffering in the hospitals right now. It's really unimaginable. There are so many parents and grandparents that we're losing every day to this virus. And it's, it's heartbreaking. And to be a clinician and see it and then leave the hospital and see people you know, not really caring about the virus. It's, it's, it's heartbreaking, it's very difficult. It's devastating to all of us. This is, the, this is our last few miles of this marathon, Austin. You know, we are in this and we're in this together. We are rolling out vaccines as fast as we can. We're working to get antibody infusions available for as many patients as we can. We're doing our part and we're fighting so hard. Um, please stay safe, stay home wear masks and just do your best to protect those around you. Well, we're seeing an increased number of COVID patients for sure. So we're uh, a much higher percentage of our patients are COVID positive and being treated for COVID uh, than we saw uh, earlier this year and more than we had during our first surge. Uh, so it's certainly affecting our, 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 our capacity. Well, you know, what's happening is there are increasing numbers of cases in Austin. Uh, it's highly communicable, highly contagious disease. Uh, a lot of patients, uh, a lot of people in the community have caught it. And although many of those people are only slightly sick, um, a significant number get sick, they come to the hospital and some of those people end up in the ICU, they end up on ventilators. And you know, we're still not through the surge yet. We, we are unlikely to hit, capacity, to hit our, our peak. We're still probably uh, short of our peak. I mean, I, I think everybody's happy about the vaccine coming out. Um, uh, I think that is going to be uh, the answer 
uh, but it's not going to be an immediate answer. Uh, we have a, a small percentage of the population that's been vaccinated. Uh, so we need to continue doing what we should have been doing all along, which is, um, uh, you know, being careful with who you associate with, uh, social distancing, wear a mask, wash hands, um, do, do, the, do the right thing there. Uh, even after the vaccine starts to roll out, it's going to be a while before we have everybody's adequately vaccinated who wants to be vaccinated. Uh, so I think we've got several more months of uh, this, unfortunately. Uh, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, one other message I want to give people is that uh, as busy as things are, we still can take care of uh, sick people in the hospital. Uh, we don't want people staying home with their heart attacks, staying home with their strokes. Uh, this happened during the first surge and patients died because of it. People stayed home with things they should have come to the hospital for because they were afraid. I understand that, but we can take care of you. We can, we can take care of you safely. So if you're having uh, chest pain, that might be a heart attack. If uh, uh, your mother uh, suddenly has become weak on one side of her body and her speech is slurred, call EMS, get to the hospital. 